So I will start my story by saying I was born at uh, a double disadvantage. I was born in a country that didn't appreciate and accept me for being a gay man. And I was born into a culture that doesn't talk about sexual health or anything uncomfortable around sexual health. And this sort of led me down a very dark path, trying to understand who I am. And it led me to having uh, risky sex with people. Some I knew, some I didn't know. And it was, it was sort of a, a tough experience to go through, especially when you're a young person in a community that you do not absolutely blend into and trying to come to terms with all of that. And so I remember, you know, trying as much as possible to hold it together and thinking if I'm able to go for my master's degree, if I'm able to get a little bit of my own space, I can sort through all of this. And so I applied for my master's degree to Australia in public health. And I, you know, applied, made all the, put everything in place basically. And I remember packing my bag. I had these two red suitcases and so I packed them. And they were just by the door of the bedroom because I knew, you know what, in one week at most I'm going to be out of the country. And just the Friday before, you know, the, the next week, I got a call from the embassy saying you need to go and get a HIV test uh, and hepatitis and hepatitis, uh, hepatitis B and C tests. And so walking to the office of the doctor was like this, I have... I, I know I have had sex with people before. I have never done a test. I don't know what to expect. But I decided, you know what, this is what I need to do. Uh, over the weekend, uh, I was troubled. I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't stop thinking about what if my test come, what comes back positive? How, where do I go from here? What do I do? And so on the Monday morning, I got the call from the doctor saying, come in. Three hours to the doctor's office in the taxi, I was just quiet. I couldn't stop myself from freaking out, basically. And, you know, it was, it, it was a period where I decided if it's positive, my life is over. And if it's negative, then I know what to do next. And so when I got to the doctor's office and he said, I'm sorry, but there's no way to tell you this, you're HIV positive. My life stopped in that moment. And it wasn't as much as, how do I live a healthy life? That wasn't, that wasn't the major thing on my mind in that moment. It was, how do I tell my family? How do I deal with people in society getting to know? How do I deal with my friends? How do I deal with people in church getting to know that I'm HIV positive? And so it was all of that fear of how would people receive me? How would people see me? Would I be alone for the rest of my life? All of that was what crippled me in that moment. And so going back home, I laid back on the seat of the taxi and just cried three, ways, three hours way back home. And after telling my family, it, it was like my thought process had been actualized. I saw in their faces the fear of how do we, what do we do with this? How do we go forward? What if people find out? And so in that moment, it, it was like, you know what? Every day was just about waking up and going back to bed, but not leaving for me anymore. I basically was existing in space. Australia changed their minds about a lot of things in my visa application and it was a constant back and forth between the university and the embassy trying to get someone to even let me know if there is any chance of still getting my visa because of my HIV diagnosis and there was no response. And so after about four months of constantly fighting for this, I was like, you know what, I think it's time to give up on this dream. Just withdraw and find what, it, what else it is you can do with your life. But there was this little voice in my head that just said, you know what, there's other opportunities. You could try another country. And so I started researching into the UK and I applied for, uh, to three universities, all three universities, you know, finally accepted me in the long run. But when I applied for my visa and I got it, it was this sort of feeling of, you know, these people didn't ask me if I'm HIV positive. Don't they care? Or is this a trap? Like, is this, 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 is, this is unusual. And I was really excited about the possibility of going ahead with this dream I have had for a very long time. I was also scared of disappointment, of being stopped in the tracks again. And so I came to the UK in January of 2020 and it was one of the most incredible times of my life because I, I remember coming out of the aeroplane in this very flimsy jacket that I wore thinking, yeah, I'm going to leave my true self. And the first thing that hit me was the cold and I realized, you know what, I think I need to first buy a new jacket. <laughs> 
And so, yeah, it, it, was, it was an amazing, you know, experience to get to know people, meet classmates and get into a new community and just embrace a new culture. And two months into that lockdown hit. Mm -hmm. And having no friends, like no real friends, you know, and companions by that time, I was practically by myself for months. And during that period, I, I went into a very dark place because I started confronting things from my past that I had not dealt with, things that I had pushed away. I started confronting the thoughts about my HIV diagnosis, the thoughts about uh, my sexuality. I started having to deal with those things basically because I had all the time to myself. And I was very depressed. It was a very, very, very dark time. And I remember this morning in July, just waking up. And I woke up and I, it, it was sort of, I, I had already stopped waking up happy. I had already stopped waking up expecting life to turn out good. So that morning, I just woke up and went down to the bathroom. And I took out a bottle of bleach and I said to myself, you know what, this is, this is the end. Like, I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning feeling the same way. I'm just going to end it here because... I, my community has not accepted me before. My family have not they're not comfortable with my HIV diagnosis or my sexuality. I I don't know where to go. I'm just going to end it. And I I, I took off the bottle cap, tasted the bleach, and was just thinking in my head, how much do I need to drink to be able to kill myself and to be able to, you know, make sure I go through with this. And just like that, like that little voice that told me to try again for another masters just said what if you tried one more time for to seek help and if nothing comes then you can go ahead and so i remember i went to the hospital got into a and e and told the nurse i just tried to kill myself and i expected them to be alarmingly you know okay so we need to lock him up somewhere but they took me into a small office the mental health nurse came in and he said tell me what's on your mind and in that moment, I poured out everything, things I'd never told people I grew up with, things I'd never said. I was able to tell someone for the first time, I am afraid no one would want me because I am HIV positive. I was able to voice it out, I was able to talk to someone and it helped. And in that brief moment, you know, I felt if I continue with this every day, there could possibly be a change. And so I was linked up with... Uh, various charities and mental health support. And from there, I started volunteering with Positive Voices. And it was sort of therapy for me in the first few months of attending and just listening to other people speak and talk about the experiences they had gone through. And that was the first time I actually heard people say things like, you know what, I felt down and I have felt like life was not worth living. I have felt like no one would want me. But you know what, there's a way to get over it. That was the first time in my life I heard someone say that and I decided, okay, so I think I'm going to stay here longer and I enrolled for the training as a speaker and I gave my first talk. After the talk, I remember going off camera and I just cried because for the first time in my entire life, I felt free, free to be myself free to tell a whole room of people I am a gay man and I accept myself. I am HIV positive and I accept myself. And you know what? I am going to live a full life. And so through Positive Voices, I met so many amazing people, friends that I would treasure for life. And close to the end of my master's degree, you know, working, working on living with HIV and aging with HIV and understanding stigma around living with HIV in a developing country like Nigeria, it sort of made me think I would want to work in this charity space going forward or I would want to work in this space with a charity going forward and so I, I, I reached out to Sue, the, the, the uh, sort of the coordinator for Positive Voices and said, you know what Sue, this is what I've done over the last year and I am hoping to get a job in this field if you can help me. And she sent me a list of jobs for different uh, organizations and you know, THD included. And I applied for one of the jobs. It was a health promotion specialist job. And in like three weeks, I got a call for an interview. And I remember saying, you know what, this is a joke. <laughs> like, I don't believe these guys actually, you know, <laughs> who wants me to come aboard and, <laughs> you know, help shape something this valuable. And when, after the interview and I got the job, it was just 
another confirmation to me that you know what life is going to be beautiful going forward and there's there's challenges on the way you know there's things that you know we would rather not face or want to face and that's just life but i remember telling someone yesterday it's good to know that even though there are challenges i am able to own it and i am able to move forward because i now have a family i now have a support system that's always there for me to face any challenge that comes my way and yeah it's it's very good to be able to have a new sense of life and to have a new version of light shine on everything i look at and everything i touch and yeah i wouldn't stop until i help as many people as possible to see that light and to understand that hiv is not the end of life or being different in any way is not the end of life.